This International Women's Day, the theme is Choose to Challenge. And of course, everyone can choose to challenge the gender bias and inequality that sadly still exists. The impact of which is felt by women of all ages and ethnicities on a daily basis. We ought to call out bias when we see it and when we feel it. But we can also choose to challenge by unashamedly celebrating the achievement of women. And women are achieving every day, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's to support their family and friends, or perhaps the active role so many women play in their community. And over the past year in particular, with the challenge of COVID, there have been so many examples that I can reflect on. It's the achievement of women that allows our society to be healthier, happier, and more prosperous. And in Enfield, we know for our borough to thrive, we need every person to fulfill their potential. That just cannot happen without 50% of our population reaching their potential. So the success of women mean the success of everyone. I've served as the first female leader of Enfield Council for almost three years. And during this period, I've been fortunate enough to meet so many amazing women who are officers at the council and also so many who live and work across our borough. And they've consistently told me that they recognise they've been able to achieve because of the support of other brilliant, good women. I know this too well from my own experience. So on this International Women's Day, as well as choosing to challenge, let me take the opportunity to thank the women in our borough for their achievements and also everything they do to help other women to also achieve. Well, I think International Women's Day highlights how far um, women have come in different areas. Uh, we've moved on from sort of the first woman MP to have much more representation in Parliament. We've had two female Prime Ministers and the roles that we hold in teachers and uh, corporate affairs, how much we have come forward since it began. But it's an, it is a celebration of how far we've come and reviewing and um, what's more to do? Enfield is a very uh, multicultural place and uh, it's a diverse place as the Enfield Council appreciating and valuing every diverse community and International Women's Day is such an important event. Enfield is in a very special place. Enfield has done quite a lot to support women. So it's very rare um, that you would see women being the leader of the council and leader of oppositions but it's something that we are proud of in Enfield and that's one of the reasons that we celebrate and we want people to see our leaders and be proud that we have women. In my lifetime I've I've lived through great uh, move forward for women some of which I've in a very small way been part of lots of liberalisation, lots of legal rights, but it is still the case that women, like many other groups in society, are marginalised and excluded. We've come a long way, we've got a long way still to come. We remember all the women who have made a tremendous effort in making sure where we are right now and we cannot forget them. And again, the impact of making sure that we are treated as equal and uh, we've been campaigning for years over gender equality, gender parity. It shows the difference women have made to the society and the different perspectives and skills are very relevant. And this is now the time where women should be highly recognized. When I look back, historically, women did not occupy the positions that they occupy today. But now there has been a lot of development in the workplace, but I still believe there is a lot more to do. Parents who have been looking after their, young, their kids sometimes find it difficult to go back into the labor market. And some employers don't offer flexible working arrangements, and that means they're excluded from some of the jobs that they might want to do. So from those perspectives, I believe that it's very important that we continue to celebrate and we continue to challenge all forms of practices because if we don't do that, we'll not be able to include a lot more women in the workplace. It's so important to recognise all the work that women do and what they contribute 
in every every aspect of our lives, from our home life to work life. And I think that we need to inspire our women and our young children. I have a daughter and I hope that we can inspire her. I grew up in a family with seven brothers and my sister and I always felt invisible. The hardest person to challenge was my mother. And to say, Mum, we're here was really difficult. And it wasn't until I was approaching 50 and my sister was just 40 that we finally managed to do it. And I, you know, and I reminded her of when I, at the age of 43, I finally got into university because they pulled me out of school so I could go and work because I would get married one day and an education wasn't important, you know, but my brothers needed to study. So, so I phoned my mother to tell her that I'd received this unconditional offer. And she said, did you know that Bob's really ill? He's got shingles. And I thought, that? And I said, no, how is he? And I just accepted it and went with it. But it took me a long time to remind her of that. And, and that was hard. She's an amazing woman. She taught me to value people. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's, it's, it's that. And I think that's really helped me in the work I do here because nobody is just one thing. As a person, I have two roles, really. I'm a mum, number one, I'm a mum. And my challenge is to balance my work life with home life. And my kids are young, they're six and eight years old, and I want to be there for them. But how can I be there for them and work? And I'm a GP, and being a GP, you don't just treat one person, you treat a family, so you are responsible for, for, for their care and there's so many different aspects of that care. So bringing, bringing both together and balancing that has been a real challenge. When I was in primary school, I was very outspoken. Uh, I, on my reports, I remember getting the, she's, she has a lot of potential. She's very, very smart, but she's hyperactive and chatty. And it's like, there would be certain things that I would do and get in trouble for, whereas the boys in my class wouldn't. There were times where I felt like I was over volunteering for things because I felt like I needed to keep up with the boys in my class because they would get, get the roles easily. There's many all male panels that I could think of. Uh, if you look at our government, if you look at other things, very male dominated. So it's just been something that's followed me throughout my life. It's just been Get, being able to do things and being worried, okay, but if I was a man, would this be easier for me to access? It's about respect and I think that if you respect someone, they will respect you. If you just treat someone kindly, talk to them calmly, they will respect you. So, as a woman, once you do that and once you believe in yourself, which I do, I think you can overcome any situation. COVID has really shown all the discrimination that is still taking place. It has exacerbated fault lines in our society. Women have borne the brunt of homeschooling. Women have been more likely to have to give up their jobs. Women are more likely to be in low paid jobs. They're more likely to be in the service industry and so on. So I think the way I see it is you see an intensification of what was there already. There have been quite a lot of vulnerable women hard to reach, where we have made sure that our digital volunteers would go and support them. And we have actually been successful in uh, securing some funding to provide them uh, mobile devices to ensure that they are included within our activities. And we're making sure that they're are not lonely and isolated at home because it has been quite difficult for quite a number of women who don't have anyone for them. It's been a, a year that for many has had huge challenges. We see people coming to food bank who have lost their jobs. We see people who come who have no income at all. And I know inc how incredibly difficult things have been for some people who have perhaps been out of work, but also then homeschooling at the same time. We've had people coming in and saying they didn't have even paper for their children to, to write on. And I know a lot of sectors have closed that could potentially have a lot of women working within them. So I think it has had a huge impact. Um, and I think 
um, the effects will be felt kind of for, for months and years to come. But I think there's also been a lot of positives. We've seen a real outpouring of generosity of people giving up their time to come and volunteer. Delivery drivers doing deliveries, collections, just people giving food as well to mean that we've never had to turn anybody away. So it's been an incredible balance between some real incredible hardship from an incre you know, incredible you know, good that's come out of um, the community coming together as well. This last year with this pandemic, um, things have been really tough, really, really tough. Trying to make everyone feel safe, making my kids feel safe, making my staff feel safe, making my patients feel safe and knowing that I had this job to do. I've learned that there is a balance. I've learned that we didn't value a lot of what we value now. So you can balance things. You can do work and be here and do what you just have to do. This has not been an easy year, but we've done it and we're doing it and things will get better. You have to hold on to that. It will get better. And we've done it so far and we're doing a great job. Prejudice is still there. Discrimination is still there. I would like to challenge that no women are lost a position because they are gender. I would like to challenge that they should be given the opportunity to show that they are capable of doing any job as good as uh, male counterparts. I've heard this at many conferences um, to do with International Women's Day over the years. And it's about women feeling more confident to apply for roles that we may look at a job description and think, well, I can only do, I think I can do eight out of the 10 points that they ask, or maybe I shouldn't uh, apply for a role. Where, there's, where um, analysis has shown that men would just go for it anyway. And it's about giving more confidence to women. There is opportunities for all, but we have to seek them and they are out there and don't be put off. And it's about the encouragement of all women um, to make sure there's better representation in parliament. We've massively improved, but there's still room to go. The 50-50 parliament would be uh, a good thing to see. The women here actually challenge me. They're always coming up with new ideas and stuff. And I love that. It's great to work in a team that feels able to speak. So it's recognising what women are doing, encouraging women to feel that they have a right to a voice. There are women who have had difficulties and they would always want to challenge and stand up to challenges in terms of making sure that there is equality and they're treated as equal. And especially women going through domestic abuse have had a lot of difficulties during this time. I mean, it has always been over the years, it's always uh, women who are more uh, victims of domestic abuse, but uh, this year particularly has been a high increase in domestic abuse and the emotional well-being needs have really needed a lot of support. There's so many things that during the day the woman may face and they will just be like okay it's normal procedure but it shouldn't be normal procedure. When I go to Tesco's to do shopping for my family I shouldn't have to you know worry about like think of what I'm wearing and because I'm going to simply get bread and milk and cheese like I, I don't understand why I should have to think okay is this gonna attract a certain amount of attention am I gonna have to and I feel like being now rather than before where I'd probably say okay I'm not gonna say anything because they're a man they're most probably older than me stronger than me now I really really doesn't matter to me anymore if I feel uncomfortable I will challenge you I love the phrase choose to challenge and I have always spoken up and I think that can be difficult because obviously it doesn't necessarily make life easy or make you popular but I believe it's about being true to yourself and I think it's about being true to other people. But I would say I'm very well aware that I've been fortunate to live in a country and in an era where I've been able to do that. I know that in other countries and in other cultures and in other eras, I would not have had the freedom to be who I've been and to speak up as I have. I've been brave enough to speak up and risk being unpopular, for example, uh, or not getting a job but there are people who have spoken up and, and they've been tortured and they've been killed 
And I have such respect for those people because that would not necessarily be me. Often when you get to those points in your life where things are incredibly difficult or there's a challenge that you're facing that you need to overcome, it's often at that point that you've got to keep going. So when everything is against you or everything seems like it's too much or there's so much that you can do that you don't know which to do first or what to choose, it's at that point that you keep going because that's when you get your breakthrough. Um, and it's about the, whatever comes your way, it's choosing to not let whatever it is that's in front of you defeat what you're doing. If we're given the opportunity to be able to join and be part of you know, ruling the world, we'll be a better place, you know, but we're not given that opportunity. And if you go to uh, places like developing countries like Africa, like I can say even my own country where I come from, Nigeria, we've got 36 states and 36 states is all male governors. Look at COVID-19. Some of those countries that actually managed to get it right were the countries where the head of the state were women. The places like uh, New Zealand, you know, Iceland, uh, Germany, yet people don't seem to see that. They still think that a woman's place is there at home to look after the children and to cook food. When I think of um, somebody who has inspired me, I would say my grandmother. She was a very diligent woman. She worked very hard to look after the family. We lived in a multi-generational household when I was growing up and she was the leader. Very, very strong character. Nobody could mess with her. And I learned my art of challenging from her because she was always challenging things. So I learned that from her. Even at a very young age, she made a very good impression on me. So the person that inspires me is Michaela Cole. Uh, she inspires me because she's so unapologetic about what she has to say. She doesn't care and she says it anyway. Um, I feel like it ins she inspires me because she's doing exactly what I want to do. And to see someone that in, in the position that you want to be showed you that there are no excuses and that there is nothing blocking you other than yourself. And I think once you get take yourself out of the equation, anything is possible. Women that are inspiring to me, I can think of a hundred. But the first person that will always come to mind is my mum. So I grew up in Trinidad, um, in a little town, and we were not well off. My parents worked very hard all of their lives, but they still work very hard. Honestly, my mum taught me not just about working hard, but she gave us, she instilled in us great family values, um, great values for us, morals for us to always live by, um, be kind, do your best in whatever you decide to do, do your best and and always care and help anyone that you can. Treat everyone the same, they're just as good as you are. Councillor Kate Anulwe um, inspired myself to become a councillor. Um, she's been a councillor for many years, double mayor in Enfield and um, a community leader in our community. So she's encouraged me, she's also uh, mentored me and coached me. So I'm very proud to have her as someone that I look up to and she's well known in the community. I would first of all say my mom has always been a great inspiration to me because she was brought up in Africa in a very large family and is growing up in Africa because I'm originally from Africa. I've seen how she struggled to make sure that she's balancing work, balancing with an extended family. And she's always been there. She has always told us that whatever you give, you always get something back. And they said that never give up. There is always uh, a light at the end of the day. And those are the words that I still even remember. I feel that it's not the end of the world. You carry on and you carry on. And I think that's been quite inspiring for me. I did women's studies and I learned about a lot and, and I think of Harriet Tubman and how she worked on the Underground Railroad and I think of Irina Sendler in um, Poland, you know, smuggling children out of the ghetto. It's, it's hard to pick one because there are so many. So this is my inspiration and this is a picture of my niece Cara 
Kara works for Centerpoint. She's very passionate about her support for the vulnerable young people she works with. She's a trade unionist. She's also very brave and feisty in, in speaking out against sexual harassment and body shaming, which is such a big issue for young women and young people in general today. When I look at the younger people in my family, I'm very heartened and inspired by the young men and women and the way that they are continuing to speak up and to challenge. And, you know, it's about our future. And as an older woman, I think I'm still part of it, but I think it's really uh, heartening to see uh, what hopefully is the shape of the future with the younger people. Mm -hmm.